Technical interview prep is hard, and that's why Algo Daily exists. It's important to know exactly how to prepare for such interviews. In this tutorial, we talk about the schedule, the cadence, and exactly how to solve problems and learn to most effectively prepare for coding interviews. Most people waste their time. We're gonna go through everything you need to read, observe, learn, and do in order to optimize your chances of landing your dream job. We also assume that you've already landed the interview and are focused on preparing for on-sites. Although all of the advice that we're gonna cover applies for technical phone screens as well. So first, let's talk about timing. How long do you need to prepare for a technical interview? So obviously, the longer, the better. The more time you have, the more problems you'll be able to solve. As a general recommendation, two to three months will get you from zero to 100. That allows you to get roughly 60 to 120 problems in, which is roughly the amount, the sweet spot that you need to develop the patterns. Obviously, a lot of factors go into this. Your work experience, your familiarity with computer science fundamentals, and the proximity to the actual interview dates themselves. It could take six months for a fresh bootcamp grad to brush up on their algorithms and data structures and get fully ramped up. For a low-level senior systems engineer, it could take a week or two. Could you pass a whiteboard technical interview from absolute scratch with a month's prep? It's certainly doable, especially if you use Algo Daily. Just make sure you're applying the 80-20 principle and focusing on your weaknesses. We've outlined 30, 60, and 90 day study plans on the website, and you can use these as guides to include and to understand what readings, lessons, tutorials, and problems you should focus on. So let's talk about how to actually tackle the sample coding problems. The way most people prepare with coding problems is not conducive to performing well. The average person will go on a site like Algo Daily and they'll look at a problem for 30 seconds to a few minutes and get frustrated and then jump into the solution. If you're reading the solution and calling it a day, you haven't really prepared. And if this sounds familiar, don't, don't sweat it. Trying to memorize a solution doesn't really work. And what's more effective is to recognize patterns and develop that intuition. So here are the steps. First, choose a cadence. We recommend one problem a day, hence Algo Daily. Our study plans optionally include two to three problems per day. You don't have to do all two to three problems. As long as you get one done per day, you'll derive the benefit that you need. Make sure that you're actually focusing on understanding the problem and understanding the concepts rather than just getting a sheer number of problems in you likely won't see the exact same problems on interview day. You'll see a problem with a similar likeness. And so it's really important that you focus on quality and not quantity of problems. And you wanna to commit to solving them in the right way. Try to spend at least 20 to 30 minutes on a problem. Get frustrated, get stuck, get angry. You want to be able to internalize the pattern and the solution when you do eventually get to that point. So what you do is you try to solve it, you get stuck, you read the first hint, and then you stop reading, or you stop listening, or you stop watching, and you go back to the problem. When you get stuck again, hopefully you will have made a little bit more progress, but then if you're still stuck, go back to the problem and try to solve it on your own again. The key is to not to rely on the solutions provided, but to actually take some time to try to solve it and get past a little further each time with the extra knowledge you do have from the hints and the bit of the walkthrough or the solution that you've read. This is what will help you retain it for next time. It's the time spent focusing on the problem solving aspect. Here are some other things that really helped me in my preparation. One thing you can do is take the solution once you've seen it and translate it into another programming language. This helps with retention, it helps with understanding basic concepts, and it helps you think about the problem from a different angle. The other thing is using 
spaced repetition. So when you solve a problem, save it. Don't just forget about it. Save it to solve it in a week's time, and then a month's time, and then three months' time. And make sure you're asking yourself questions after every time you've completed a problem. How far were you from solving it yourself? If you were asked this question tomorrow, could you solve it? What patterns emerged? What areas do you need to work on? Really analyze your own performance and make sure you're thinking about how you're solving these problems rather than just blindly going through what we call the grind. Now, what do you actually need to prepare for in terms of technical concepts? Well, the world of programming is enormous. And so you won't be able to cover every aspect of software engineering or programming. But at a high level, here's what I think is really important. So I'm going to give you a list, but know that the list is a generality and it changes from company to company and from interview to interview. So of course, we'll start with the most important parts of computer science and we'll dive into some things that are good to know. So number one is big O notation. You must get this part correctly. Big O notation helps us understand trade-offs as engineers and helps us evaluate algorithm performance. It shows that you're an engineer who values scaling, good decision-making, performance, and trade-offs, and evaluating all of those things when picking how to write your code. This allows interviewers to have confidence in you, to know that you're gonna avoid poor performing code. Imagine if you go on Facebook or Google and it took an hour to get the friend or the result that you want. That'd be terrible. Some other concepts that you need to know in terms of data structures, hash tables are king. Make sure you can implement one from scratch and you know how they're used. Queues and stacks are amazing tools. Know about linked lists, singly, doubly, circular. Know about trees, basic tree and node construction, how to traverse them, and how to manipulate them. Learn about the subset pattern. Know about tries and know about balanced trees if you're going for lower level jobs. With graphs, get to know all the implementations, objects and pointers, adjacency matrices, adjacency lists, and their pros and cons. Sorting algorithms, just remember at least a few n log n algorithms, like quick sort or merge sort, like the back of your hand. For math, know some basic decimal and binary concepts, and for others, just know the patterns. Depth first search, breadth first search are must, post order, pre order, traversal, and beyond these basics. For lower level positions, you might also encounter Dijkstra, traveling salesman, knapsack problem, but these are very rare. People worry about math, but you likely won't see anything beyond probability, basic counting, and basic statistics. Now, a quick word on programming languages. Make sure you choose a language that you know well already. This is not the time to learn how to write a for loop in your programming language. You want to be able to express yourself well. The interview is checking how well you express your ideas in code. Coding interviews aren't about writing good software engineering. It's about giving you a problem, coming up with a solution to that problem, and expressing it in the language of your choice. Now, of course, there's exceptions. If you're mostly a front-end engineer, you're gonna probably wanna use JavaScript. If you're mostly a systems engineer, something like Rust or C++ or Java is probably more preferable. The important thing is to choose a language you're extremely comfortable with and stick with that. With regards to object-oriented design, know the basic concepts of polymorphism, abstraction, encapsulation. And then with systems design, there's a lot there. With systems design, check out our guide to studying and preparing for systems design interviews. But some things you might want to know are basic constraints, design, databases, database schemas, vertical and horizontal scaling, caching, load balancing, database replication and partitioning, MapReduce, basic estimation, 
and concurrency. Systems design in itself is a huge concept, so I'm not gonna rattle off any more topics that you should study. There's many resources, including AlgoDaily, that'll break down these concepts. So everything you need will be on algodaily.com. I hope you check out our 30, 60, and 90 day study guides, and best of luck in your technical interview. Thanks for watching.